guys, look at how handsome Cody looked when he was younger. Of course, he's still handsome right now, but look at him. Cody. His stocking. So, hello everyone. Welcome back to Hobby Master. Today, we're going to be filming a video about what containment area is best for your dog. And when I say your dog, just like with the leashes, collars, harnesses thing, I mean dogs like yours. I mean, like, every dog has individual, like, the, every tiny thing, um, different for their con desired containment areas. But these are a few common ones for a few common dog behaviors. I'll be going over each of my dog's containment areas and also other ones that I've seen people use and have used in the past. Containment area number one, an X-Pen. X-Pen X -pen is short for exercise pen. It means that the dog has enough room to run around and really get some energy out. This is not, I repeat, not good for house training puppies because in an area this big they will not view the entire thing as their bedroom so they will make one spot their bedroom and one spot their feeding area and the other spot and any other spot their bathroom area so for puppies i strongly recommend also to get them used to it a smaller thing like a crate or a dog house if a crate or a dog house is not suitable for you I really don't recommend an exercise pen, but if an X pen, but if you really have to, make sure it's small enough where it can only fit a bed or a sleeping area, a feeding area if you choose to have one, and a small in a small toy area. No extra room. They will decide that's their bathroom area if they have to go, and you'll be coming home to some puddles or some piles. <laughs> But for older house-trained dogs, an X-Pen is very good for them because often dogs like a bigger area to be in, um, alone and confined in um, above like a crate or dog house. This is Cody and Coco's exercise pen. Do not get an X-Pen this big unless you are storing two dogs or an extremely large or a pretty large dog. Otherwise, um, your dog would have too much room on his hands and it might actually start to get, like, rambunctious. Or, if it really had to go to the bathroom and go, eh, I can sneak off into this little corner. But, this is kind of a makeshift one. You can buy ones that look more like pens at the zoo, small pens at the zoo. But it's made from my bed. A cardboard crate box that's heavy wall of my room and another wall of my room except there's a shelf there with all their food it has coco's bed cody's bed a bin of dog toys these just two toys that they can climb on random dog toy and two food bowls this is just their area anyway. It is their containment area, but it's also just their area. That's why their dog bed, their main dog beds and food is in there. So you could make a makeshift one like this. Just make sure you either have strong boxes, a baby gate, something where your dog can't tip over or easily get through. And I have, in my containment area, I have a, just a little window to let in, so I can, I can open it a little bit to let in some sunlight for the little boys. Number two. A bathroom or a small room like a laundry room. It could be maybe your small mud room. Madison, come on. Come on. She thinks she's going out. Come on back in. So we have a small mud room that doubles as our laundry room. Or it could be an 
another area. But normally people choose bathrooms and or laundry rooms just because they're usually more easy to puppy proof or dog proof, whatever. If you choose a bathroom, make sure it's small enough where they don't have a huge area. Same rule as the X-Pen. Keep the toilet lid closed. You wouldn't be amazed at how tiny dogs like Madison can jump. Make sure you don't have anything dangling off the vanity that they can easily grab. Like, I wouldn't leave Madison or Cody or Coco in here. Because this is right here. They could jump up, grab it, rip it up. Make sure your toilet paper is like that. So that they don't grab it. Although, if you have a big dog, you, may, you might just be better taking the toilet paper off anyway. Make sure all soaps and ceramics are tucked away. In case the dog like you know does some crazy thing where they climb the toilet onto the table or if you have a bigger dog and you want there to be a window you know dogs dogs need light make sure there's a sturdy door and the window for ventilation as well if you're doing it in a mudroom or laundry room just make sure they can't get into any cleaning detergents shoes and all that stuff you might keep out of there if you have closets close them and as for leaving a dog in a closet, don't, because there are no windows, and dogs need ventilation. Oh, guys, look at this. Elves wear masks, guys. <laughs> Number three. A dog crate. These are a very common containment thing. For a dog crate, you need to make, you want to make sure that it's the right size for one thing, and if you have a puppy you have a divider panel that makes it fit to the right size. Make sure the locks, good sit, Madison. Make sure the locks are nice and sturdy. Make sure the crate's nice and sturdy itself. You could get a double door if you'd like. There's really no difference. Make sure you have a nice crate mat and if the dog seems to chew at the crate mat or dig at it when they get worried, um, to either take the crate mat away and replace it with like a blanket or something or put a pillowcase over it because the a lot of them are made of this fuzz or like a fuzzy material one of my dogs got that in their mouth before and let's just say they ended up throwing up you can have a shirt or any other article of clothing or a blanket or something that smells like you and make sure they have a favorite toy in there um that they like. This goes for any of the containment areas, obviously. Good bow, Madison. Madison is kind of picky with her toys, so we just have a towel in there. She loves it. And also for any containment area, we have something else that I'm going to show you at the end. Containment area option number four. A doghouse. These, um, a lot of people use them for outdoor containment. We, we have one for inside. Um, Cody just doesn't tend to like this bar thing. So it's just a nice, soft, some of them made of fabric and a uh, sturdy material in between each piece of fabric. Some of them are made of wood. They're all different. Some come pre-assembled, some don't. Like this one was not pre-assembled. Um, so just make sure you make, like, a cozy environment, you know? Since it's just, like, a crate, the whole thing's their bed, so either put a mat or their favorite blanket. This is Cody's favorite blanket. This is his favorite travel dog bed. Some of his favorite toys. Really good chew. That's for all of them, really. Moving on to number five. A gated off area. We actually don't have a baby gate, but if we did have a gated off area, it would be something like this. It would have a dog bed, some sort of food eating area. We'd have some probably toys over here, or towels if it was Madison. <laughs> and we'd have a baby gate just right here. This is very convenient since we have the couch and the wall. So yeah, but not all of you have a place where you can like a corner where you can get it off. So if you want like an, an, a little enclosure like this, 
I recommend an X pen or a small laundry slash bathroom. Option number six, an outdoor containment area. Guys, I do not, you should not do this if you have a small dog because birds of prey and animals like coyotes can actually jump over or fly into fences and they will pick up your small dog and, and carry it away. So this works if you have a big dog that can fend for itself. And we have like we have a huge fence, but I would recommend maybe gating off a little area of the fence. Maybe giving them a dog house. You could put them somewhere like a shed or a garage. Again, puppy bird. Yeah, look, see a bird like that. Came right for the video. <laughs> um, like we have. So again, we have a big fenced-in area. But if I were able to leave one of my dogs outside, I would probably gate off an area or maybe put them on the porch with obviously a gate here now here are some just quick tips and tricks for leaving dogs alone for dogs with separation anxiety my first tip is to watch my video about training dogs out of it some dogs might just never go some dogs just might never get really used to a containment area but just tr experiment and see what they like we want to make this as easy for them as possible. But here's some stuff you can leave in with them to make the process so much better. So, first of all, first off, clothes that smell like you. Dogs like to be close to you at all times, obviously. So leaving them a clothes, an article of clothing or a blanket or a pillow that smells like you makes mo makes most dogs feel better about being somewhere alone. Leave them with their favorite toys. Dogs often, sometimes dogs will get distracted by their favorite toys and not mind as much being alone. If you can watch them but can't be with them so you have to have them in their containment area, bones are great. Just do not Leave them alone alone with bones in case they bite off a chunk too big and then choke. Kong toys filled with stuff like easy cheese or treats are great. Dogs often lo love to work their minds to get stuff out of the Kong toy. Leave their food in with them. That makes them feel safe and it makes them know their containment area is their home. Guys, I just remembered another type of containment area that is kind of old-fashioned, I guess, by now. This can be done in inside or outside, but take the same outdoor rules into consideration. Having a leash tied or wrapped around something sturdy and strong, and having have a little section f area for the dog where the leash buckles. The reason that this should probably not be done alone is because if a dog was in a sheer panic and they wanted to be with you so bad and they were really worried about where you were, most urgently, most panicking dogs can easily bite through a leash, um, hurt their neck or body trying to escape from the collar or harness, have the harness or collar slip off, or, um knock whatever it is holding them over and sometimes it can knock onto something like them and get severely hurt um severely hurt that thing so if you want if you would want to leave a dog in say a corner like we said but you don't have an some for some reason you know to get an x pen or a baby gate make a little section for them and then kind of do the leash thing. So guys, that is the end of today's video. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and watch the rest of Training Any Dog. And guys, I will see you in the next one.